10 minute point right there, uh, as Alex corrects me. Uh, you know, what I was, uh, was going to commentate on is sometimes as you're watching, I don't know if anybody in the audience can really see this, watch the audience members that are in the crowd and how funny it can actually be because the balls here are live all the time. And you can see cameramen and girlfriends off to the side and just every once in a while you're going to see something really, really funny as balls are flying from one Because there's no protective glass, there's no nothing. It is not a spectator-friendly sport, that is true. That's, uh, you'll notice there is netting around the gym, but uh, the people here on the sidelines are definitely taking their own lives into their hands. And, oh, it can, it can make for some interesting strategies. I remember um, back in the original uh, court group, Josh, you remember, or, uh, Alex, you remember when people were lined up off to the side and you could actually pretend to be out as long as your foot was in bounds, you were in play. Therefore, we had people that legitimately stayed on the side, even on the opponent's court. Ooh. <laughs> and you could get people out sneakily. Whoa. So number 22 from Saginaw with a huge throw. Number 44 plucks out of the alley. It was a cotton ball. Didn't even react to it. Uh, number 22 from Saginaw even gave him a brief little golf clap, I think. Uh, oh, and Another catch. 44 with sticky hands. You know, we're missing Josh Raymond right now. He's going to get a drink of water, and he knows everybody on WKU's team. Uh, number 44, as I look this up slowly is doing some major work on the side right here. Uh, 44 is Zach Kelsey. So I'm not exactly sure what happened there while we were talking about it. It looked like he made another catch, but uh, he was actually called out by the line ref. I'm not sure if he said that it had, he got nicked by another ball. I'm not sure what happened there, so. A nice little kill. See, WKU's not taking advantage of the momentum another swing. Another catch, number 15 for WKU. This is what will win games for them are these catches. But then watch, you'll see, even though they don't, uh, Saginaw doesn't have a tremendous ball advantage, Western is immediately back on the back of the court. So we've started play up again here. There was a Saginaw pop ball, press. which yeah. happens. Let's see, uh, look at how slow Western is on this counterattack. They, they made one throw, even though at this point they do have the ball advantage. Um, Western cannot play this passive game and expect to win against a team like Saginaw. Now, one of the things that also helps you win games is the play from people that don't have balls. It might not seem like they do much, but there is a major intimidation factor for if every single player at WKU was up at the line, it, it slows the other team down. They have to decide who they're going to throw at. So just having people up at the front, even if you don't have a ball, is going to greatly increase your chances of winning. I, I, you know, I agree in it. This early in this game, the teams, you're not familiar at this point on the other team. Who are the cannons? Who are the catchers? Uh, obviously, at this point, I think they're going to be keeping an eye on 44. Uh, number 44 for Western obviously is a threat, so they're going to make sure that their big throwers uh, try to avoid him because they don't want to give him easy catches. Seems to be number 44 and number 20 from last game. They already know, do not throw at them. So you take that into advantage. You go up if you are those two players because now they're afraid to throw at you. You get right in the front and you block for other people with your catches. I'm not sure what the call was there. I think it might have been trapped against the ground. I don't think we're calling that a catch for Saginaw. All right, so we're seeing a bit more of a volley here, a one ball back and forth. Looks like bigger push from Saginaw, well. Two throws from them, one throw from Western. Ooh, nice attempted a cross court throw by number 19, but he just couldn't make it work. Got tagged out. Looks like seven players in for Saginaw. Can you give us a count for Western? They got 11 or 12 players. No, we have a WKU timeout. Yes. Now, Alex, um, one thing I'm noticing, even though Saginaw Valley has less people, they always have a ball advantage. It's because WKU is throwing at people with a ball, and they're just going to block it down. They're too good to hit with the ball. You can make yourself smaller, and that ball takes up a lot of your body surface, surface area. So WKU is just throwing these balls away, 
and that's why Saginaw remains heavily favored in this matchup because they continually to have uh, continue to have a ball advantage. I agree, and I'm not hearing as much communication from WKU as I'd like. Uh, they're doing a good job of calling their cross courts. I'm seeing a lot of good work from their blockers, but I'm not hearing any communication about who they need to target. I haven't seen any really good team throws. Um, we'll maybe see it once or twice, but I'm noticing one thing that you'll see with Saginaw, and I've got the camera, camera posted here, in this back corner, they almost set up like a square. They've got two guys in the front that have balls for blocking and then two of what looks like they're bigger throwers behind. Um, I'm not seeing any kind of tactics or strategies from Western like that. And you'll notice Saginaw is doing a very good job of protecting their cannons. Um, you know, obviously they can't protect them against catches, but I've yet to see one of their strong arms get taken out by a throw because there's either a blocker there or someone else that physically puts their body in the way of a Western throw. Now, they might be getting out, folks, but it's not a coordinated effort from so WKU. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. Look in that corner. They had those two guys in the front, uh, and then as soon as Western makes a move, they jump forward. Again, another throw at a blocker. Even if you have a ball, folks, if you go to the front of the line, very quick outs yeah. for Weston. That's, that doesn't bode well. Plus, it's number 20. Howdy, fellas. What did I miss? A good game. Really? That's great. Uh, actually, we're, yes. we're, we're, running through to, we're running into a lot of the same problems we've had before. Uh, there's not nearly as much communication from Weston as we like. Uh, there's no real group throws. And what uh, Ben pointed out, they're making a lot of really hard throws, but they're throwing at blockers. Yeah. They're not throwing. That's never made sense to me. Uh, I'm not really sure what their strategy is there. I think they're hoping that they just can catch someone blocking the wrong direction. Maybe get them on the knees or something. No. You know what's disturbing is we're up on the second floor, and I can feel Saginaw Valley's throws against the wall down below me, yeah. and that's so intimidating. You can hear for the him. wind coming oh, off yeah. of them. It whistles. Yes, it does. Now, I was also, uh, the, the guy from Saginaw on the back court there and the gentleman here on the edge of this court, those two seem to work together a whole lot. I've noticed uh, when they're on the defense, those two are in the back blocking for some of their power throwers and then immediately push forward after that throw's been made. Yeah. Looks like we got another shot clock violation. Western is not getting those throws off in time. Nick Johnson imploring his team to listen to the shot clock and for the love of God, get a throw over before the shot clock runs out. The second shot clock violation for Western in 20 minutes. So You just can't have those at Nationals. You gotta be aware of how much time you have left on the clock. What the, pro the problem is, they're intimidated by Zaganel Valley's throws and you can't be. You, you have to throw, even though you want to block because it's much safer, you have to throw a ball. And that takes out number 55 for WKU. Only two players left in now. I'm sorry, three players left in. Aaron Hedges, Brent Schinkel, and Zach. Zach Kelsey, number 77. And that's a kill there on number 55 by Zach Kelsey, dropping his blocking ball. Hoffman for Sag Valley taken out. Zach up in no man's land, just about got tagged with a cross court. Two players left in for WKU, Brent Schinkel, number 12, and Aaron Hedges, number 88. We'll see if either of them can get a throw or a catch right now that can kind of swing this point back in their favor. Aaron Hedges going out, I don't know what for, and Brent Schinkel is caught there, ending the point for Saginaw Valley. So gentlemen, what do we think about that point before we go to break? Uh, we're just gonna we're gonna pair it the same things we've been saying, man. WKU cannot stay on the back foot, and they are, and that's what's losing the game. Period. It was a carbon copy of the first point. Uh, Western had the man advantage, they had the ball advantage, and they start playing passive dodgeball, and Saginaw just rips it away from them. Well